Hi, this is Jim Bell with the Diversity Consortium. Welcome to our XBE Thrive series, the micro on the XBE Health Plan. Appreciate you being here with us today. Um, I am joined by Dr. Tony Chohan, who is the Chief Medical Officer for First Call Health Services. Hi, Tony. How are you today? Great. Great. Thank you for having me here. So what I'd like to do with the audience today is just walk through the Diversity Consortium's XBE Health Plan, sure. talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, healthcare, particularly for small businesses and disadvantaged businesses of all types, we, we call XBEs. So uh, we're gonna investigate over the course of the next 45 minutes or so, kind of what's in the plan, uh, what, what options there are, what alternatives there are, we're going to take some questions late in this session. So thanks everybody for joining. You will notice that in your um, action menu on, on your right side, you can chat uh, or you can just jump in and uh, raise your hand. We'll recognize you and you can ask the question that you'd like. So uh, so let's go on and, and kind of move through the presentation a bit. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the diversity consortium um, and, and what we do. Okay. So the XB Health Plan is actually a collaboration between the Diversity Consortium and First Call Health Services. OK, so the Diversity Consortium uh, it was made to address the needs of the dis disadvantaged businesses, as we call them XBEs, uh, to uh, help the employers become uh, competitive in the marketplace. So when we looked at what these uh, XBEs needed across the board, it was pretty clear that they were didn't have any kind of health care coverage for their employees. The traditional health insurances just cost too much money. So the DC turned to first call health services, uh, which is based on a primary uh, direct primary care model uh, to provide primary care services. This started to evolve into what is called the XBE health plan. So let, let me ask a, a little question there, Tony. So uh, certainly from the DC, I recognize that that our mission is is to change the landscape of of supplier diversity both from a corporate perspective and then being able to to meet their goals and objectives and commitments around their ESG reporting. Um, I, I think the survey results that we saw, there was a variety of very highly pressing issues, um, that of financing, that of uh, resourcing, that of ability to retain and attract uh, employees. So. So the health benefits uh, is is a direct result of, of that survey, exactly. trying to address or tackle those obstacles that are out there that are keeping the businesses from growing at the rate that we would like. So so the the health plan, as you're going to talk about here, is is kind of a wraparound alternative for for what Boy. would typically be seen in corporate America's uh, employee health benefit. Sure, sure, sure. So the health plan itself has uh, various components to it, one being the direct primary care, and then there's a healthcare network built from uh, what needs to make it a very viable and strong offering to these XBEs along with the risk management. So if we were to look at what exactly is direct primary care here, which uh, a lot of us may not be familiar, um, it's a model that's been around for at least 15 years. It's based on the idea of a flat monthly membership fee that allows you to see your primary care doctor as often as you need. Um, usually there are 30 minute increments, so you're never rushed. Um, there are also, uh, uh, you utilize telemedicine, some of the basic labs are included, and then any additional labs are usually at cost. So it uh, it's affordable, it's accessible, it's your primary care doctor providing quality care at a flat monthly fee. So, so Tony, I was struck as I was learning more about uh, direct primary care, and this is really a throwback to the to the patient and the local doctor and you had a relationship and you knew who he was and they knew the family. Exactly. Um, direct primary care really is the 90% of the activity for a patient happens with their doctor, right? Exactly, very true, very true. Um, it, and it goes to complex. Uh, 
medical care. It's not just, hey, I got a uh, sniffle, I got a runny nose and this and that, but it's your primary care services, hypertension, diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, any of those can be taken care of at a uh, physician's office. You know, I, I'm uh, I'm also struck. I'm a middle-aged guy. I have uh, some complex kind of health issues, and it's really weird that you go to the doctor, or you go to a specialist, or you go to a another you know service provider, and they know nothing about each other. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything about me. I wait in the lobby. I give them my money. Hopefully, it all comes out together. And you see them for about five minutes. That's right. So the thought of having someone who's helping me coordinate all that take the advice or the instructions that's being given to me by some random service provider and make mm-hmm. it make sense in my life that uh, feels pretty good awesome awesome so we realized that we could provide this direct primary care services to these xbe's but is that going to be enough what happens if they need stuff that's outside of primary care can we build a healthcare network um by providing additional offerings uh, such as dental, vision, behavioral. So we we brought this group together um, and can make that affordable as well as direct primary care. You're already getting wholesale pharmacy from the primary care clinic. You're already getting imaging at cost. um, And we have negotiated prices with specialists. So how can we we make this even more viable is by bringing in these additional offerings. from this network, I think it's the ability for people to to leverage scale. Yes, right. There are thousands and thousands of organizations that are disadvantaged business enterprises, and there's no real group that these people can belong to. But when you shove these organizations together, you have great buying power. Yes. So the ability exactly. to negotiate on a much larger scale mm-hmm. is uh, is pretty attractive. Um, we, I, I think that the projections are to be somewhere on a quarter of a million patients yes. inside, which is as large as many, many groups for we any can, organization. We can really impact that landscape there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the other component of this was the risk management. You know, what happens if uh, you get into an accident, uh, you break your arm, you have to go to the emergency room. How do we cover that cost? And this came up with a uh, supplemental plan that covers accidental and critical care. Couple that with a high deductible major medical, and now you got a very strong offering to these XBEs that is viable, uh, that's affordable for them, and that allows them to meet and retain that talent that we were talking about earlier. It makes their employees more productive. On top of that, we do have case management. There are social programs out there that people are just not aware of. By having case management, uh, our team is able to help them navigate those waters and get what they need, when they need it, um, at affordable pricing. So, so Dr. Johan, I, I suppose this is looking at healthcare provision almost from a different perspective. So many people buy insurance, they pay their deductibles, they pay their out of pocket, and they treat symptoms. Yes. You know, I have a chest pain, and I think I'm having a heart attack. Where this this XBE health plan, the direct primary care, is trying to make sure that you don't have those symptoms. You manage your health a little better, but you have to have a contingency plan in case you have a wreck or you have exactly. something that you can't really control. So this this risk management allows us to emulate a a full corporate Blue Cross Blue Shield type of program with in-office care, then supplemental care if something abnormal happens, and then the use of a high deductible plan that the supplemental pays. So end to end, you get the same kind of coverage, but at a fraction of the cost. Fraction. We'll get to that uh, in a second here. So we we utilize all of this and bring it together using a technology platform that allows you to be uh, to engage with the software this will keep you on track on your calendar you'll have your labs there you'll have your providers there and allow you to be proactive with your health it's wearable stuff that uh, helps you meet your goals so hey am i getting my steps in am i being active did i get my lab work done on time so all of this uh, utilizes technology to help you stay healthy 
And, and you're talking about like phones and iWatches and our Apple Watches yeah. or Fitbit. our Fitbits yeah. or even even equipment at the gym yes. sometimes can speak and, and give credit. So that that that's excellent. It provides a, um, a validation that mm-hmm. things are happening, accountability, and probably even is the basis for award programs, right? Exactly, exactly. So when we look at all the offerings that we have, and if you were to look at our traditional pricings of what it would cost with the insurance base, you're probably looking at $1,600 per month. Um, we can offer our XB health plan at somewhere around $425 a month. This is a 75% value. It's a better value uh, for what's out there. And this is an alternative for these XBEs. It's a great service. Service. So, so as we look at at this combination of the diversity consortium and its advocacy for supplier diversity and growing that community mm-hmm. and improving the businesses and the communities in which they live, um, tying into the healthcare, the healthcare network, and the technology to support and uh, XBEs employees and their yes. health. Um, there, there's some really striking things. It, it is completely focused on that demographic, disadvantaged businesses and their their staffs and their mm-hmm. employees. Um, it should improve the ability to compete with organizations because we've seen it time and time again that a a two household income, one spouse uh, gets terminated or for some reason can't work yeah. and and somebody's being well paid with an XBE has to leave and go to Walmart make 50% of the money for health insurance just so they have coverage yes and, yeah. and it's just a shame so trying to curb that uh, requirement um, I, I believe that what this does then is gives us option to manage the risk of healthcare. It's exactly. a huge expense, but but this gives us a very proactive way in which to do it. Yeah, and it allows the employee or the member to be engaged with it. You know, um, using our technology platform, they become proactive instead of sitting back. And then you have something happen, and that's usually too late. You know, so if we can get everybody engaged and active, we can live a healthier lives. Well, it's it's interesting in the research we've done to get to this place and and the XBE health plan. Mm-hmm. Employers want to help, want to be a part, but just can't afford the twenty and thirty percent a year premium increases that come along. And that's not that's not all, right? Yes. You still have copays and you still have um, out of pocket deductibles and those kind of things. It's yes. just it's phenomenal. So the ability to get better health benefits at a much more reduced cost and put the risk where it really belongs exactly is with the person so that yes. they can manage it just seems like it probably helps on on all ends yes and we're just making healthcare accessible here yeah, yeah. well it's got to change That's it's it. crazy i i was uh with some industry professionals yesterday and they said that as we leave COVID and we go into 2023, the the rates and the subsidies are gonna return to pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. So that might take an $800 deductible with a st- uh, with a subsidy back up to 17 or $1,800 premium. That's scary. So there's gonna be a big impact as, as we leave the, the COVID era here. <clears throat> So this, I think you kind of summed up a lot of stuff on this slide here, you know, um, where the partnership between the diversity and the first call services is helping these XBEs meet a need, make it affordable, make it accessible for their employees, and overall making their employees more productive. Yeah, it's just a great plan. So, so Dr. Tony, let's, uh, let's, Let's turn ourselves to the the callers and let's see if there's any questions or comments or clarifications that we can provide. Hey guys, yeah, so we have a few questions from the crowd. Um, So Dawson and I will field those. Um, But the first question that we have is, what would the process of implementing this in my company look like? So. Um, we would start with a, our team would come out and speak to the uh, company, the HR department and the employees and allow uh, them to uh, ask questions and give them information on the various XBE plan. From there, we would have a sign up process, uh, usually a link 
for the EMR system to get into the healthcare, the DPC clinic, as well as paperwork for the supplemental plan, the uh, major medical plan, and enroll from that process. So it's a fairly simple process with one visit, and you can just enroll a lot of that online. So Dr. Tony, I, I've noticed that the business owners appreciate us being able to come in and do a, a bit of a business justification. Mm -hmm. Here's what you're spending today or the impacts of not spending it today. Here's what your future costs will look like in that of your employees. Yes. Um, so, so once that's done and all the clarification and questions are answered, a, a team will absolutely come in and do the onboarding to help get all the paperwork in place and get it set. Uh, and that's typically a, a done in a 30 day window. Yes. Um, so depending on what the schedule is to get that done, we can see people uh, actually receiving in, in clinic services uh, in the next month. Month, yeah. Great question. Yeah, um, we've got another question. Um, you know, with the exception of DPC, this person asked, it seems very similar to kind of traditional benefits where it's a collection of insurance coverages, um, you know, with the exception of the DPC. So how are you guys able to offer this, you know, as an alternative so much more cheaply than traditional benefits packages? Well, that's a great question, uh, Dawson. So what we've done is taken ourselves out of the insurance business completely. The, the supplemental and the major medical are third party offerings. So they're not in the exchange. So that we're not trying to manage risk of, of a group at this point. So what it allows us to do is focus the heavy attention on the um, direct primary care, uh, the physician relationship with the patient, and then be able to push out that risk. It's not required, right? You don't have to have those other coverages. Some people feel more comfortable having them in place. But I, I, I was kind of struck by, you know, 90% of most patients' care is done in, in, the, the, primary in the primary care, right? So there certainly are times, but not necessarily do you need to make those payments. We had a, um, we had a, a situation or a staff member that was complaining of, of paying you know, next to $2,000 a month premiums, and they, they never used it. Yeah. So they were spending twenty five, twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars a year, and they weren't sick. Yeah. So they they never actually got to their coverage, and if they did, then they had copays and and out of pockets that they needed to meet. So it, people are paying for these things whether they're doing them or not. So yeah. so I hope that addresses the question, uh, Dawson. Yeah, I think so. And Tony, I think when you were answering. The question that Adam fielded, um, you may have covered this, but if someone asked, you know, if this sounds good, take this back to my team, what would be the next step for us to kind of get some more information and move forward if we were interested? So, so I, I believe that there is, you know, a, a research and discovery process. So we're glad to get in a, into a one-on-one -on -one conversation, be able to provide the, the options, and there are a ton. There are, are a lot of uh, almost cafeteria style options to make it right for the business and for their employees. Um, we'll, we'll help do all the justification and clarification for, for the organization. And at that point, a, a, a program proposal will be created. Mm -hmm. um, that, that proposal is then authorized, scheduled for onboarding and all of the things that will, will happen thereafter. Um, but it's very predictable uh, and, and you, you kind of get to know before you go into the process what, what's going to happen next. It's all very transparent. We've got a question from Chris B. Uh, I'm not in South Carolina. When are you expecting to open in North Carolina? So, so that's an interesting question. We have been working with a variety of, of providers in, in this place. So um, we're working through some of the final legal issues, which would allow us to be nationwide um, as of mid-year, so, so next month. So we will work on, on an as-needed demographic basis, but it looks that by the end of the year, we'll be able to provide this nationally. We're expecting something like 250 physical clinics or so. So uh, as we kind of mature past 
the the beta rollout in South Carolina, by the end of the year, we could be everywhere. Jim, you want to talk about the team? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I want to kind of go back to the to the inception. Uh, as the diversity consortium was trying to understand the challenges to disadvantaged businesses, we brought together a a host of governmental agencies, non-government organizations, some churches and community leaders. We started to talk about this issue of of employee benefits and health care. Um, with that, we formed a, an organization, and and in that, we put together a leadership team of doctors and administrators and and uh, business management people to help build a viable alternative to to what people had available to them. So as we look at Tony and 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 some of the other board members of the leadership team, these are people that have had decades of experience working with some of the largest hospital organizations in the country. So truly organizations that uh, that we, we have a lot of resource and experience going in and try to roll out what is a, uh, a very innovative approach, mm -hmm. focused completely on the business clients and their staff, not just patients, but how do we help bring an offering and a, and a benefit to employees that help these businesses grow? Right. <clears throat> so any other questions, uh, Dawson or, or Adam that have come over? Yeah, I've got a question here from Tom. He asked, uh, he said, I'm, I'm familiar with direct primary care. I've never heard of that. And you, you wanted to know if you could talk a little bit more about it. Wanted to know if that's something like, can he visit his regular doctor or is it a separate pat practice? Is he paying per visit? How does that work? So the direct primary clinic would be our provider. Um, so he would come and see uh, the local office and see that physician who he will build a report with and see that same individual over and over again. So uh, like we were saying, uh, we're kind of uh, going back to that patient doctor relationship. And that's what makes the DPC clinic so strong uh, is that we become your healthcare advocates and uh, we're able to provide a high quality care just because we Take the time to get to know you. As 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 I was again learning, Tony, the uh, people have needs that are outside office hours, right? So twenty four hours a day and seven days a week. So we've got um, full coverage. We do uh, one hundred percent of the time, whether it be text or email or phone calls, um, televisits. Yes. Uh, so any of those kind of things. Make sure that although it may it may be someone standing in in an off hour there's always someone to talk to. Just always somebody to talk to. And utilizes technology and telemedicine and just uh, incorporates the overall health of that individual. So you're never alone. All right, thank you for uh, joining us, Jim, and um, for uh, uh, if you, there are more information or if you have questions, please reach out to us. Uh, uh, we're, all, we're here to answer anything that you might have. All right, I do want to uh, direct everybody back to the Diversity Consortium website, thediversityconsortium.com. If you go to XBE Services, there is the XBE Health Plan there. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot of information. There's some uh, um, forms and, and, and material that you can download. Feel free to give uh, Dr. Tony or, or Art or anyone in the office a call. We'd be glad to uh, come talk to you. Um, be glad to provide you some more information and help you get there. Uh, remember that uh, this is part of uh, the XBE Thrive series. Uh, this is a monthly venue that we do topical um, group sessions in this sure. kind of webinar environment. And as a part of that, then there become deep dive sessions that we call micro. This is the micro for the XBE health plan. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Do look on the calendar uh, of events on the website for other topics that might interest you or feel free to just uh, ask some questions on the website and someone will follow up. So thank you to everybody and uh, have yeah. a great week. We appreciate uh, the opportunity and the privilege of your time and we wish you a very happy 4th of July.